But listen to this hadith. It's narrated by Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went out of his home at an odd time of the day, at an odd time of the day or the night. So it was a time that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam typically would not come out of his home. So it can be assumed that it was between Dhuhr or Asr or it was sometime in the night and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out. When he walked out, he noticed two people sitting in the masjid. Abu Bakr and Umar. May Allah be pleased with them. Typically, this story would end up going in this direction. They then went and they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they proceeded to some sort of expedition or some sort of place in Medina or to visit somebody because that's how it always was, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr and Umar. How many ahadith start off that way? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar, may Allah be pleased with them both. This one is different. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes out of his home at an odd time of the night and he notices Abu Bakr and Umar sitting there. And he says to them, what is it that brought you out of your homes in this odd hour? They said, Al Jur Ya Rasulullah, starvation, O Messenger of Allah. We're hungry. We came out out of hunger. Abu Bakr and Umar, these are the three most important people in the Ummah. Think about that. And they're sitting in the masjid, and they said, The only thing that brought us out at this hour was Al Jur. We're starving. We're hungry. And guess what the Prophet says? Wa ana wallahi he said, and I too, by the one in whose hand is my soul, I only was brought out of my home because of that which brought you out of your home. The Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and Umar were hungry. And they were coming out of their home at an odd time of the night because they were hungry. If you just stop and pause at that for a moment, the Prophet ﷺ, who had the most adoring set of followers of any man in history, who had the greatest generation present with him in the Sahaba of the Prophet Qarni, the greatest Ummah, the greatest generation of people, the greatest man with the two greatest men of the Ummah that were not Prophet, in the masjid, in a prominent place, because they didn't have anything to eat and they could not sleep because of their intense hunger. The man who والسلام, used to have people at his door all throughout the day and night, knocking and calling out to him, always making demands of him, about whom Allah revealed Surah Al-Hujurat. People calling upon the Prophet the Surah of the Hujurat, because they were calling upon the Prophet throughout the day, throughout the night, and really harassing him. He was being harassed alayhi salatu wasalam. To listen to this person, and listen to that person, and do this and do that, and not being given his privacy, not being given his personal space alayhi salatu wasalam. And they were hungry. No one noticed that the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Umar were hungry. And this is a reality, by the way, that we have to understand that usually caretakers are never cared for. It's a part of our human psyche. No one thought to ask the Prophet ﷺ if he was hungry. No one thought to ask Abu Bakr or Umar if they were okay. The Prophet ﷺ, who used to go out and would, if he noticed hunger in your face, think of the narrator of the hadith Abu Huraira, who once the Prophet ﷺ just knew he was hungry by looking at him and took his hand and found him something to eat for the night. He knew it from your face. The Prophet ﷺ, who spent day and night in the service of the people, feeding the people, no one bothered to ask, Ya Rasulullah, are you hungry? His khuluq, his character was the Quran. You would think that these people are sufficed because of their ta'affuf, because of his modesty sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It never showed. He was smiling. He looked fine. The Prophet sallallahu never showed discontent with his companions. He never showed them that he was hungry. He never showed them that he was in need. In fact, the only time he did it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was when Umar radiallahu anhu, one of the three hungry men at that time, walked up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Ahzab in Al-Khanda and pulled up his shirt and showed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he had a stone tied to his stomach because of how hungry he was. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pulled up his shirt and he had two stones tied to his. That's the only time he ever disclosed his situation alayhi salatu wa salam. He was a walking Quran. You know what? This is the implementation of La Nuridu Minkum Jaza and Wala Shukura. We feed you for the sake of Allah. We don't want anything from you. No thanks, no gratitude, no compensation. Abu Bakr and Umar, who were competing in serving the people in the obscure parts of Medina, were hungry. It's not an excuse for the Ummah. That doesn't mean the community got a free pass. Like, oh, okay, well, it's their fault. No, it's not their fault. People need to pay more attention. 
the volunteers, the caretakers, those who, who, who lead in whatever capacity, they also need to be cared for because if they're cared for, they can care for better. But out of their akhlaq, it didn't show. So these three men, subhanAllah, the Prophet Abu Bakr and Umar, all gathered together hungry. And so he is living his own example, alayhi salatu wasalam, and that's the peak of service and not having any expectation of the people. Far from living like a king, the Prophet ﷺ was living poorer than everyone else that he was serving. And he never complained to the people. Story continues. The Prophet ﷺ said to them, Qumu, get up and let's go find some food. The Prophet ﷺ, the greatest creation, the greatest human being ever alive, and Abu Bakr and Umar, the greatest two men of this ummah, walking around hoping that someone will find them and give them food. They come to the house of one Ansari man, and the Ansar were a generous group of people. And the woman of the house was there, and you imagine opening your door at this strange time of the night, and who's at your door? The Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Umar. Something must really be wrong. This is probably a death announcement. I mean, how does this happen where these three people show up at my house in the middle of the night? So she said, Marhaban wa ahlan. Like she was shocked. She welcomed them. Marhaban wa ahlan. Greetings to these amazing people. And the Prophet ﷺ greeted her back. And they asked her where her husband was. She said that he went out to fetch some water. He's a simple man. He's going out to fetch some fresh water for them to be able to drink for that night. But she invited them in to wait for the husband. The husband comes back home with these canister, with this water, and he sees these three men sitting in his living room. And he said, Alhamdulillah, all praises be to Allah who honored me with the most amazing guest. What privilege do I have to have these types of guests in my home? And so as he started to see them sitting there, he recognized their need. He gave them water, and then he went out and he started to collect dates, a tum of all sorts of dates, ripe dates, dry dates. He starts bringing the dates and he starts hurrying up back to the Prophet ﷺ and to Abu Bakr and Umar, serving them dates with their water. And then, not only that, after he got them those dates, he takes his slaughtering knife and he goes and he grabs a sheep and he wants to slaughter and cook for them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, make sure it's not halud, make sure it's not a milk-bearing sheep. And he knew his sheep, that he had his, his flock. So he slaughtered, he cooked, and then he served them that cooked meat. Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Umar sitting in your living room, eating water, dates, and some meat, probably for the first time in months. And at that moment, as they're eating to their fill, the Prophet ﷺ, who does he look at? He looks at Abu Bakr and Umar. You don't get off because of this. He said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي He said, look, we live this experience together. That's an unforgettable night. That's an experience that you don't forget. And these are companions. These are three men that deeply love each other. And he says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِي I swear by him in whose hand is my soul, لَتُسْأَلُنَّ عَنْ هَذَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ You will be asked about this night, about this blessing on the Day of Judgment. أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِنْ بُيُوتِكُمْ الْجُوعِ What got you out of your homes was hunger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ثُمَّ لَمْ تَرْجِعُوا حَتَّى أَصَابَكُمْ هَذَا النَّعِيمِ But you are not returning to your homes without having been touched by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You better be grateful for these blessings. SubhanAllah, it's unfathomable to think of the Prophet ﷺ as the hungry Prophet. You think of the brave Prophet, you think of the courageous Prophet, you think of the eloquent Prophet, you think of this, but the hungry Prophet ﷺ, the orphan Prophet ﷺ, the grieving widower ﷺ, the grieving parent ﷺ, and here, the hungry prophets, the hungry Abu Bakr, the hungry Umar, who in their lowest moments, this is an experience, this isn't, the Prophet ﷺ would go hungry often, in their lowest moments, are still being reminded to say Alhamdulillah, because you will be asked about that blessing on the Day of Judgment. Now, to summarize, an attitude of gratitude here, from the Shama'il of the Prophet ﷺ, from his description, the Prophet ﷺ was already expressing gratitude before that moment. He was expressing gratitude by not complaining of his situation, and by still being a grateful servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even as that situation was taking place. So it's not until he, it's not when he praised Allah after, it was his attitude before he got that na'im as well. From the attitude of the Prophet ﷺ, from the Shama'il of the Prophet ﷺ, as Aisha radiallahu anha said, he never found fault in anything that was given to him, and he never criticized any food that was served to him. Any king, prime minister, leader, how would they act with their food? What about us? What about the Prophet ﷺ? He never once criticized the food that was given to him. Not once. He never criticized a gift that was given to him. Anything that was given to him, the Prophet ﷺ showed gratitude. If he didn't like the food, he simply didn't eat it. But he would not, he wouldn't look down upon it or talk down the gift or whatever was served to him because that would be in gratitude, not just to the person who gave that gift or served that food, 
but to the one who provided that in the first place. He didn't, he wasn't inclined. There wasn't a slip up. The Prophet ﷺ never showed ingratitude for anything that was given to him or criticized it, whether he was in Mecca or whether he was in Medina. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says that three hilals, three crescent moons, meaning three months would pass upon us and the only meal we had in our homes were al-aswadan, the two black things, al-ma wa tamar, water and dates. That's all we would have. If you had water and dates in the place of a meal and someone asked you, did you have dinner? Would you say, yeah, I had dinner. Alhamdulillah, I had dates and water. You wouldn't even say that. You wouldn't even call that a meal. That was the food of the Prophet ﷺ many times. Those were his meals. How do we get down to this? There's a practice. Allah challenges you and I. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be able to do so. If you took one blessing Allah gave you and tried to count the blessings within that blessing, you would fail, I would fail to be able to fully count those blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, always find something good to say about your situation. If people are complaining, find something good about the situation. If people are talking down something, talk it up. Always. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّذْ Speak of the blessing of your Lord. Show that gratitude. Make sure that it's vocalized. Make sure that you're saying Alhamdulillah for what it is that's been provided to you. Try to pay attention to the things that others are not paying attention to. You know, you read all these websites on how to show gratitude. The first thing they say is a gratitude journal. Write it down. Allah already said it. Count your blessings. Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah would make it a point to actually sit there and count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What can I be grateful for that I wasn't paying attention to today? Something that came very simple to me. Say Alhamdulillah for them. Always say something good about the situation that you are in. Find something to say good about that situation. Even if everyone or everything around you is pointing towards the bad of that situation. And the last thing, don't you ever feel entitled. We are not better than those people that are dying in the cold right now. We don't deserve it more than them. Our ahwal are a test for us. Our state is a test for us and their state is a test for us. But no one deserved the blessings of this world like the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and Umar. May Allah be pleased with them. But they didn't feel entitled. It wasn't entitlement. It wasn't the Prophet ﷺ saying, it's about time you recognized my hunger and that you did a better job. They were not entitled. Instead, they were always grateful. We should be questioning ourselves as to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose us for the comfort that we are in right now. And the best way to thank Allah for a ni'mah is to use that ni'mah in a way that's pleasing to Him.